any other factor. Next slide, please. Um, another thing that a lot of people do um, is modeling reading, you know, just reading to kids. Um, it's another great way to promote literacy and to help establish a strong foundation in reading for kids. Um, probably most people know that children learn through observational learning. Um, and it's particularly strong when coming from people of status, their parents, their, their teachers, the people who are in their life. But it's not just about copying the behavior, it's about what the consequence of that behavior is, whether it's positive or negative. Um, so children learn that reading is a positive thing by seeing the adults in their lives read, uh, not just to them, but also for themselves. Uh, so, you know, mentioning that you read for yourself, not just um, that, you know, you're spending time reading to kids, but that you also just read yourself um, can also help kids before they learn to read, um, that reading is important and a, a positive thing. Next slide. So what's so special about third grade reading, which I feel like is the, the thing that I always hear about. Um, so third grade uh, is the first year for standardized testing in South Carolina, that's the SC Ready test. Um, but it also marks a point of transition for kids and their sort of reading journey. So before third grade, the focus in school is really learning to read, you know, covering um, reading instruction, covering phonics, vocabulary, that kind of thing. Um, but after third grade, that's really the shift to uh, reading in order to learn. Um, so after third grade, roughly 85% of instruction includes the student needing to read in order to absorb information. Um, and that's across all subjects, all disciplines. So really before third grade, you're learning to read, but then after third grade is that reading to learn. And that's why third grade reading is, is sort of the, the benchmark starting point level. So next slide, please. So what happens when a student falls behind in that third grade reading? Um, by the end of third grade, 74% of struggling readers won't catch up. <laughs> um, this is data from the NEEKC Foundation, uh, which has a lot of great resources. Um, students who don't read proficiently by third grade are four times more likely to leave high school without a diploma. Uh, for students in poverty, that rate is six times greater. Um, and for Black and Latina students, the combined effect of poverty and poor third grade reading skills makes that rate eight times greater. So really, it's, it's crucial to try and get students at third grade reading level before, you know, and uh, for sort of later success. Um, next slide, please. So what does that look like in South Carolina? <clears throat> So 56.7% of third grade readers score below their grade level uh, in reading. And that's from the 2021 MAP scores. 58% um, of eighth grade readers score below grade level in reading. And 73% of children who've been tested are not ready to enter kindergarten in the fall of 2020. Um, so that's just kind of a snapshot of uh, South Carolina as a whole. Um, and if you go to the next slide. We'll take a nap. Um, you can find all this data, you can find this for your school district, for your county, um, at the Department of Education website. And these are just screenshots, um, and I'd be happy to walk you through uh, some other time how to find this. But it's, it seems very, but it's actually pretty straightforward. If you go to ed.sc.gov um, and do either forward slash data, or if you look at the top left, cor top left corner and see data and reports, you can find test scores for your school districts or your county. You can find uh, what the current um, guidelines are for teachers for literacy and early learning. And this is just a wealth of information for um, you know, any shaping any projects that you guys might be thinking of. I've used this for my club's um, um, literacy projects. I've used this to determine how many students to, you know, to, to kind of get things for. Um, so the Department of Education website is a pretty good tool. Um, and that's just a very brief snapshot. Um, I have, uh, when the slides for this go out, I have links to the data that I found and um, some other resources. So thank you.
thank you, Brianne. That was excellent. And I do see a question in the chat box. And I think what we'll do is if, so we can make sure that everyone has time to do their presentations. We'll save your question um, for the end. Um, but I'll, I'll try to make sure that everyone's questions do get answered. Thank you, Brianna. That was great. Um, and next up are our illustrious Rotarians from the Clemson Sunrise Club, uh, Jim Simmons and Davian Jimmy. The floor is yours. Uh, yeah, Jim and Dave, you're both muted. Should have known that. <laughs> Here we go. Good afternoon, it's Jim. Um, what you see is our logo, and we happen, I've got it in my hand too. What we do is we stick these, stick a sticker on each of our books, and then we also provide a little little uh, bookmark for the kids as well going on before that. But that's our logo that we came up with uh, within our club. Next slide, please. This is our mission. Uh, was to collect and distribute 2,000 books. And we were trying to look uh, to get it out to the children on, uh, in a, within our area and district and in, in, our, in our county. I will tell you in our program, uh, Dave and I took over a program that was started uh, a while back and, and we'll talk a little bit more in terms of parts of it. Uh, so we just built a, on the program within our, within our group, which we were fortunate. Uh, a couple of good people did that. Next slide, please. This is the why, and I think uh, Risha Ree, you had a, you had shown that this is the drop in our third graders <clears throat> meeting exceeding expectations, both in reading and writing. When you look at from 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, you'll see that it dropped uh, 6.3%. And even before, even before COVID, I mean, if you look at 50% of our students not having that ability to meet a level, what, what is your future? I mean, how do, you, how do you progress in your future if you can't read and, and just be part of the community as a whole? Next slide, please. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about the funding. Uh, what we did on this is just remember that you have a new club president that's coming on uh, and, and your budget cycle is starting now. So what you may wanna do is whisper in the ear of your new president and say, hey, I'd like to do a literacy program and then project and then try to figure out how you can do that. And this at least puts a line item, hopefully in your budget uh, for that. If not, at least you can, you've at least started the process on that side of it. Our funding came from the Rotary International District Grant. In other words, from the rotation, uh, ro uh, Rotarian or what I call big Rotary, giving us back money from the 50% from the foundation and what we've done in the past is typically between about $1,500. And then we have to match that with $1,500 from our club, either in raising it or donations, et cetera, from that side. So that's where you get the matching club funds. So now all of a sudden you got a pot of $3,000. Uh, so we also get individual club member donations. And then we've done some outside grant funding as well. Uh, we've done, we were pretty fortunate for the last two years uh, with the Dabo Foundation uh, from Clemson, uh, getting five thousand dollars, which we are, which was so we've been looking at spending between eight thousand to ten thousand dollars a year on that side of it. But that's you know, and then we also get club members donating books as well to it for us. So that's that's another area where you can do that, where you can go, and some of these things can be just as simple as going to the dollar store and picking up the, the board books for you know a dollar a piece and then getting those donated and then going over and, and, and donating those to different uh, areas around the, your county that you could use at this point. Next slide. So our project partners for this year were the Pickens, Pickens Coney and Anderson County third grade elementary schools. Uh, you saw how third grade is important. And what we do with those schools is we purchase a dictionary and a companion book to go with that dictionary. Uh, and then we provide those to the third grade classes, and we're doing that for, for six different schools at this point in time frame. There's plenty of more elementary schools out there that we can go with, but that's what our funding is covering at this point. We also donate books to the United Way Pickens Camp IROC. And the wood, good thing about the Camp IROC that I like uh, is that they, these are students that are recognized by their teachers that are selected to go to this camp. 
And at the same time, what they have the opportunity to do is not just read, but do a lot of other different things, but they measure their reading skills at the beginning at the, and at the end, then you actually get a result of where you can see some of their improvement in terms of the reading on that side. Uh, we also do uh, working with the Foothills YMCA, which is over here in Seneca. And they have the after care school program, which is at every elementary school within Oconee County at this point. So we donated some, about 200 books to them so they could go out to these particular after school care programs. And they have a leader at each one of those schools that, can, uh, that also does and donates books and, read, and reads to the students out there as well. And then finally, <clears throat> we did the Ch Clemson Child Development Center and we donated a couple hundred books there. And the idea is just to try to get people involved with the reading on that side. The secondary side of this program is that we have our members go out to these schools or to the uh, Camp IROC or to the YMC, YMC after school program, to be able to do that, or the Clemson Child Development Center. Uh, Frank, um, our district governor, went out and actually gave some books one of the high, to one of the third grade classes, the dictionaries and the companion book, and then also had the opportunity to, to read them. So you can see how seriously he's taken the, the literacy program for our district. Next slide, please. This is the, our results for this year. You can see what we've done with the number of books on that side of it. A little bit, you know, and trying to hit that, hit the 2000 books that we gave away and then plus the thousand children that we wanna, that we were trying to impact at that point in time. For. What I would say about the literacy program <clears throat> is you can have an impact just going out to third grade classes. So it's, even though we raised money and funding for it, uh, we still have the opportunity to go to these classrooms or go to these child development centers or go to the, uh, the after care school programs. So you can do a, a unfunded program just by reading to, to students. And we have the points of contact obviously with the schools, but I would tell you that even with your, within your <clears throat> particular county, there's an opportunity if you reach out to the programs to be able to do that, to be able to do at least an unfunded program if you want to be able to just start a literacy program on that basis. Uh, the other side that we kind of try to do on this too is, um, I know that our, the Rotary, International Rotary uh, looks at, uh, at uh, what I'm trying to think of here is the, aspect of, um, shoot, I can't, I've lost my thought process on that one. Anyways, we look, oh, diversity is what I'm trying to think of. So with diversity, we also look at trying to purchase a companion book or books that include, uh, you know, different ethnicities and with uh, girls and boys in it and all that kind of stuff. So it uh, actually kind of checks two blocks within the Rotary, uh, International Rotary side. Next slide, please. Uh, the other thing that will involve is our, our, our members at the club. So they get the opportunity to help me stick books with the sticker on that side of it. Uh, they deliver books to the, re the respective schools. So they are, we have a partnership or our members have partnerships with those schools. And then there's those reading opportunities, both to schools at the school at the third grade level or even in aftercare programs on the other side. I would also say that <clears throat> we could reach out as, as a group uh, to other Rotary clubs within our area and counties as well, and include them in terms of reading programs and anything along those lines, or even joining up with another Rotary club to uh, combine funds to be have a, have a greater reach and impact to clubs. So there's an opportunity on that side. Uh, next slide, please. I think, and this is just some of the results of pictures that we did, that we had taken uh, and students with books and thank yous that we get from everybody on that side to uh, do that. So it hasn't been, it, you know, it's been a wonderful program. And I think the most rewarding thing that we've given back to is not just seeing the students, but actually the Rotarians reading to the students have come back and they've been, they've got more stories and interest with the kids and that come, uh, at that point. And just, they're filled more with the awe of uh, reading to the kids at the same time. Frank. Dave, you got anything you want to contribute? Yeah, Jim, I think you covered it very nicely. Uh, I, I would emphasize that uh, that last part, Jim, that uh, reading to these kids has, has done a lot for the kids, 
but it has done an awful lot as well for our club and the involvement uh, of our club in the uh, in the program. I think that's really been been wonderful to uh, to see on on both sides. I'm just reminded of, of one story. I think one of our earlier speakers talked about setting an example, and I'm always reminded of, of Senator Scott growing up as a, as a kid in the Low Country and uh, having breakfast and and seeing his grandfather uh, uh, read the newspaper uh, there at the uh, dining room table. Well, uh, Senator Scott found out uh, a little bit later uh, that um, his grandfather really couldn't read. And he asked his grandfather, "What? What? Uh, why did you do that? And, and his grandfather said, I did that because I wanted to set an example for you and, and the other grandchildren. So that, that bit of sending, sending an example is, is really very important. Hey, That's thank it. you, Clemson Sunrise. I only have mild club envy about all, all the projects that you do. You're amazing. Okay, let us move on uh, to E. Davis from uh, Lauren's Rotary Club. Share with us what you folks are doing. Well, I'm E. Davis. I'm with Lauren's Club, and we've been sponsoring literacy projects for several years. And I'll try to share some of these. The simplest project we have done for quite some time is to ask, have the speaker at the meeting sign a book, which is given to the school district office to place in one of the elementary schools. We have procured the books by shopping for Dolly Parton imagination books that have been don donated to the hospice store. And if that's not possible, and we're running out of hardbacks because she does only uh, softbacks now, uh, Books can be ordered from Scholastic as a good source. The list that Dolly Parton has is a very good source for deciding which books to purchase for young children. Uh, each year, our club honors 10 students in each class at our high school. This past year, books were provided for each senior to sign at the luncheon, then they were delivered to the elementary schools. The students and their parents attend this luncheon, and it's a great celebration. Next slide, please. Um, I'm going to insert something I just was told by our club president. Recently, the club received an anonymous gift of $25,000 for literacy. The club is now working on the details of how we're going to use this, these funds in the future. For quite some time, we've been involved in Rotary Readers. A team of members goes to the Head Start Center once a month. However, due to COVID, we were unable to go in person this year, so we had to get creative. A group of members meet now to video our presentation, one per month. I usually lay out a lesson plan for the year and provide the books to be read. Then Rotarian Dr. Jim Yarborough, a singer guitarist, prepares songs for each month. He is assisted by the readers of the day, so the children have a model to follow. This is one of this is following is one of our lessons. We begin with the same introduction each week as the children get settled in their space to watch and participate. Change slide, please. This is the hello song. Uh, moving on. I, I don't hear any sound, but that's me <laughs> singing hello, everybody. Can we fix the sound? Her faith is working on it because I know there's sound. Otherwise, I can sing it. <laughs> <laughs> we might need you to. <laughs> indeed, yes, there indeed. We go. Hello, everybody. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed, my darling. Okay, well, we got the tail end of it. This is Five Little Monkeys. Oh, 
I guess there's just a delay. Okay. But <laughs> Faith, will, Faith is an expert. She'll figure it out. Hey, I am Daniel Epley. I'm at Rot with Rotary Readers, and we are happy to read to you Five Little Monkeys. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. It was bedtime, so five little monkeys took a bath. Five little monkeys put on their pajamas. Five little monkeys brush their teeth. Five little monkeys said good night to their mama. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> then five little monkeys jumped on the bed. One fell off and bumped her head. Mama okay, you called can the doctor and the doctor. <laughs> you can see that we involve members of the club and um, we like to be a little silly sometimes. That's good. Hello, boys and girls. This is Poppy, and I hope you're having a good start to the year. And we're going to do some songs for you today. This first one is Spread a Little Sunshine. So that's something good to do every day. Spread a little sunshine. Start this day off right. I'm going to spread a little sunshine. With my own special light. Shine my life with hands I can clap. Hands I can clap. Toes I can tap. Eyes I can wink, eyes I can wink, and brain I can think, brain I can think, hand I can shake, hand I can shake, friend I can make, friend I can make. I'm gonna let my light shine all around, all around. I'm gonna let my light shine all around. Okay, children, sing it with me. I think you get the idea and um, last week we got together and filmed the um, presentations for March, April, and May. We start the year with a little engine that could. In May, we use the book that says, I knew you could. In addition, I had a policeman who um, is in our club. He was in uniform and he was reading Words Are Not For Hurting. That's how we do it, and we've had fun this year, even though we cannot go into the center. I talked to her yesterday. We still can't go into the center, so we had to get creative. I think that's it for me. Just I've got the, the one little oh, short oh, video. Yep. What he did during the day. So, hope you enjoy this. It's called Baby Beluga. <laughs> So this is the Baby children at the Head Star Center watching the video. You swim so wild and you swim so free. Am I love all to see the love? There's the police in the mist. Well, I'm looking at it. Baby Baluga. Baby Baluga. In 
a lot of war is your mama home with you so happy way down yonder the dolphin is play where you dive and you splash all day way from in and the way from out see the water's frozen out of your spine Okay, I learned a new song. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I don't know the Baby Beluga song. So I Jim, think it's really nice. It was nice to be able to see the kids enjoy that too. Jim can come up with a song you've never heard of for every month. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> Thank you so much. That I think, and that's something that with a little technology, I think, you know, any club could do that. Okay, let's move on to Lancer Show, Batesburg, Leesville. That was fantastic. Um, how wonderful. Hi, I'm Lancer Show, Batesburg, Leesville. And uh, the number one thing that we've been doing for probably seven or eight years is just collecting books throughout the year. And I know a lot of other people do the similar thing. Um, we have a we have a festival that's done. Uh, once a year, it's called the Poultry Festival in, in our town. And we'll hand out a couple thousand books over a, over a day and a half. Um, and then whatever's left over, we actually hand out during our Christmas parade. Um, we're kind of expanding that to almost any event that we have in town uh, at the park. Uh, we will set up a rotary tent and just have someone there manning the tent to hand out books. Um, I collect them here at the house. People drop them off. I'll get I'll get donations, you know, two, three times a month. Um, people will be cleaning out an attic They're, You know, their kids have pretty much aged out of some of the books and they just bring them over. Um, the other thing uh, that we're doing is, is very similar. The, the in-person reading at Head Start. Of course, we did have to take a break on the Head Start stuff um, until uh, I was allowed to go in um, right before Christmas actually was allowed to go in. And one of the things that's pretty important from my perspective of going in and reading to the kids is at the Head Start, I'm really reading to uh, the parents as well. Uh, so, you know, we talked about modeling and that's kind of what I'm doing is modeling, not just, you know, not just reading to the kids, but also showing the parents sometimes about reading with inflection. Um, and another thing that is really, gosh, so important, it's important for men to, you know, once you're, once we're able to get back into the classrooms, um, especially the primary and elementary school, it's, it's really important for men to be there reading to kids. Um, I know we're a small community, about 5,000 people. We have one primary, one elementary, um, so we don't have you know, it's, it's, it's easier to get into the schools. Everybody knows everybody pretty much. And um, it's important to have those, especially the, you know, the little boys to see men reading books to them because oftentimes they don't, they just don't get that at home. Uh, another piece of ours is also purchasing brand new books. And we usually design that based off of need. Um, and it's usually primary elementary school will come and um, they'll say, you know, we, do you want to partner up with us? We're looking to give, you know, so many books away during the Christmas or during the, uh, the summer break. And so a lot of times we'll, we'll design what, you know, how much we'll purchase uh, based off of how many kids we have in each classroom that are going to get those books. Um, and we're teaming up with, um, I believe the Lions Club got them backpacks and we provided the books. So we, you know, partnered up with other organizations. Um, trying to think if there's anything else to, to talk on that. It's pretty, you know, pretty simple, like what other, everyone else said. And then I'm also the mayor of our town. So um, during the pandemic, when we couldn't go in, I started doing some recordings, just, just kind of like this. And uh, I would try to record every Wednesday. I would just do Facebook Live and uh, post it up. And my daughter, uh, because everybody was at home, uh, my daughter would help produce. She would, you know, bring in an animal from the yard or, or whatever. And um, kind of a beginning, middle and end. And I even got to where I would give the kids a shout out. Um, 
And so we have might have a little bit of video. Uh, those can get pretty lengthy. So if we cut one down, um, if you could start that video. Uh, or... And Lancer, I think it is the whole video. So on the next slide. So I think you'll want to, oh. yeah, just um, stop it when you feel it's appropriate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see if uh, it's next slide. Like it's, yeah, it's really good morning, good. kids. How are you? Oh, there we go. I have another little friend here today. It's Friday. What an awesome day it is. And this, um, this, look at this one. This one is a Rhode Island Red. I don't know. That's pretty cool. We'll let her go get warm underneath the heat lamp. Um, so good morning. Happy Friday. I am Mayor Scholl. Welcome to Storytime. It's good to see everybody out there. So today on this Friday, I'm going to continue on with, it is, again, it's Earth Week. So we're going to continue with another little Beatrix Potter book. And this is going to be the tale of Tom Kitten. Just a quick little tale. And see what Tom Kitten gets himself into. Once upon a time, there were three little kittens. And their name were, names were Mittens. Tom Kitten and Moppet. They had dear little fur coats of their own and they tumbled about the doorstep and played in the dust. Yeah, yeah you can well, let you us climb up the, up the rockery and sit. Um, what, and, and, you know, kind of what we're trying to do, we are trying to incorporate more Rotarians to get in front of the cameras. Some of them are a little shyer than, than the other group. Um, so trying to get more people and reading. Uh, my son does a lot of editing. So we're, uh, we're doing some other videos with, um, with some Winnie the Pooh and some other things that are uh, where we're, he's transposing and putting the pictures up here. Um, so we're playing around with it a lot, uh, but, you know, trying to working to get more Rotarians involved and also just just keep reading in front of kids. Like like they said earlier, modeling is is a uh, key, I think. So thank you. Thank you so much. And I mean, I, you know, you were you had to be creative. We weren't allowed to go in person. And that was just a perfect way to do it. I just I just love seeing the videos. That's fantastic. Thank you. OK, and last but not least is Jerry Rents from Emerald City. And OK, there you are. All right. I, OK, uh, I just wanted to quickly bring everybody up to date. I know I've had several opportunities to speak to everyone about Dolly Parton and there's probably people on on today that haven't heard anything about Dolly Parton Imagination Library but I thought it's important just to kind of give you an idea to where this program is uh, to date. Um, if you look at the slide uh, Dolly Parton has been ongoing now for 27 years there's uh, five countries that are actively involved with the program. Over 175 million books have been given out and 2 million children are currently registered to the program itself. Uh, and as Brianna uh, spoke to a while ago, I think the concept for Dolly Parton is getting the books in the hands of a child. And they do this because every child that registers in this program gets a book each month for five years with their name on it. So as that child grows up and as it learns that there's a book coming in the mail every month, they take ownership of the books as they come in the door. I was always concerned about whether there would have people, parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, anybody like that in the home to read to these children. But uh, it's been a proven that if the books are there, that somebody will, will pick up that book and read it to a child. So with that being said, the research, there's three bullet points in this first slide. Uh, children that read, have significantly better early language skills. They have higher literacy scores at kindergarten and they have significantly better math skills. 
uh, if you if you look at the overall program right now, there's 12 states that have state funding uh, so that every child that's born in that state begins getting a book at, uh, at the first month of their life through the age of five. And, and then there's legislators now showing interest in six other states. So that's the overall picture. Uh, coming to Emerald City, next slide, please. Uh, if, you, if you look at what we've been doing since uh, 2014, uh, when I got actively involved with the committee, uh, we've already distributed 38,699 books uh, to children in our county. Uh, and that's a total of 1,925 children served with right now 1,254 children receiving books each month. Uh, it, our goal was 60% of the 4,000 children that are born in Greenwood County uh, each uh, year. Uh, and, and right now our committee consists of the di Director of Early Childhood Development the, in our school district, the director of, uh, of, of the uh, principals for elementary school. Uh, also, we have the librarian for our public, our city library, uh, and then several Rotarians. Uh, but in our committee, what we've really tried to do is to find donors and donations, uh, whether it's in grants or whether it's uh, in uh, uh, businesses, whether it's in corporations, whoever will give to the program. Uh, and, and so far, uh, people are just so generous when they better understand the issue around literacy in your own community. Uh, if, if you, uh, right now in Greenwood, uh, one of the most important meetings that I've had is been updating the principals uh, in the elementary schools in our school district. And one of the important initiatives that we now see is just communications, just learning, just understanding what is, what is going on in the area of literacy in your county, in your community. And it's so important to interact and talk to these people who are leading our leading educators in our county uh, that their passion is to have every child reading uh, by the third grade because that's a game changer. It's like everybody said, uh, Greenwood has been very, very fortunate uh, to have uh, introduced uh, over the last 10 years, Greenwood Promise. And right now in Greenwood County, every child that graduates, every young person that graduates from our high schools have a two year tuition free uh, uh, at any of the technical schools they can go to, uh, to start their first two years of school. Next year, we're going to increase that to feeding class though, to give this, tuition free concept to them and allow these uh, young people to go to college. So that's why it's imperative and important that these teachers there in Greenwood have, I mean, these children have the books and the teachers have the children ready to read by third grade. The, one of the interesting things that we've done just recently outside of funding and outside of continuing to uh, get the kids involved is, is that we have met with the teachers and each of the teachers are going to get a, a sampling set of these Dolly Parton books, so 27 altogether. And from zero to one, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five. And they will have these books that they can use in their classrooms with the kids to read and to talk to and also to use as a library to give to kids that haven't gone through or haven't been a part of the program. But starting this year, we're gonna be able to register every child that's two years old in Greenwood that's going to go into 3K. And as they are registered, they will then be 
uh, pre receiving the books from three, four, and five year years of age. So it's just exciting right now to, to be in Greenwood. But what I would encourage all of you to do is start with your state legislators, uh, whether they're representatives or senators. And so we've been working with uh, Palmetto Project and, and we're going in the next week or two to get every one of you a list by county, by zip code, a list of, of legislators in your county or in your district. And so that all of you will have the opportunity to speak to them personally and tell each one of them why it's so important for uh, them to begin to look at some of these literacy improving projects and programs in our state so that we can catch up with the other states that are all, already far ahead of us. So that's the presentation. Contact me. There's zillions of things I'd love to talk to you about today. And, and it's just an exciting time to be a part of, 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 of what we're finding is, is the most important part in a child's development. And that's being able to read by the third grade. Thank you Thanks. so much, Jerry. I love to see your passion too about um, the work that you're doing. It's really amazing. Um, so that that's the end of our presentation. We've got a couple of questions in the chat box. I'll, I'll go through and some of them I can handle and some of them I might need some assistance with. Uh, the first question about handling background checks to visit schools. I can tell you in Pickens County, um, what we do not need a background check if uh, our volunteer is just going into a classroom to read with the teacher there and a group of students, we do not need a background check for that. We do if the uh, volunteer would ever be alone with the student, and then we do need to get a sled check done. Um, and if you could get a nonprofit to do it for you, then it's a much less expensive rate. As a nonprofit, I can get a sled check for $7, and I think it's a good bit more if you're not. Is, is anyone else's county different than that? For those of you who go into schools, any requirements other than, I mean, if you just go into a classroom with the teacher, I don't think you would need a sled check anywhere would be my guess. Okay. Um, and then there's a question about, are you allowed to enter into uh, schools? In Pickens County, we are not. Is anyone right now allowed to go in? No. Yeah, we're hoping this summer for our camp, we'll be able to, we've been given, kind of given a heads up that maybe we're, we'll be allowed to do that. Let we are see. allowed in district five. Oh, that's great. Okay, and, I'm, and it's probably different in every county. And if it's something you're interested in doing, I mean, just call your school district office and, and ask. Um, let's see, anything else? Lots of people loving the videos, which are just really great. I love Lawrence doing the hand movements with the with everything. Really good. Um, I think that might be it. Do we have any questions in the group? We made good time. I promised I'd get you out of here on time and maybe a little early. Any questions for any of our presenters or about education in general? Or Karen, how, Karen, can I say one thing? Yes. Uh, I, meant, I meant to give you this. Uh oh, it is froze. A little frozen, Jerry. Oh darn! It sounded important too. <laughs> well, hopefully oh, that, is, that is born. Are you there? Okay, you'll need to start over because you froze. Okay. There's two hundred and ninety-two thousand uh, children five years and under in the state of South Carolina, and if the state was to support that, it would be seven million dollars annually. Is all. And if you think about the billions and billions of dollars being spent for anything and everything, your legislators need to understand that you want some of your money spent for improving literacy in your, in your community. Thank you, Jerry. Okay, I'll open it up to questions. And if not, apparently we did our job. Our goal was to give you little simple ideas to great big ideas um, and things that you could easily implement. And just remember that you can reach out to me um, and I'll really quickly put my email. I do in have one box. quick question for, I guess it was um, Jim Simmons. What's the companion book to the dictionaries? What we did was I, we chose a book and this one was, Elroy, Elroy Jake, uh, 
it goes tall. So I look on go like to the uh, Scholastic website or bulk books and kind of pick a book that's at that level. And since we're targeting third grade uh, students, so it was a it was a chapter book that we gave with the dictionary. But it wasn't specific to the dictionary. It was a book specific to the age group. <clears throat> no, it was it wasn't a specific. It was just a book that was. We just, I just chose an arbitrary book out of that that uh, would give them an opportunity to have their own book to take home with that dictionary. And if that, and that's what, that's what we did at that. Super, thank you. I'm glad you, and I'm glad you brought up the dictionaries. Just one quick thing. We, uh, my club had done dictionaries for a while and for whatever reason just stopped. And I think we kind of felt maybe schools didn't want them anymore, but we just reached out to our elementary schools and the teachers, jumped on it uh, for us providing paper dictionaries for um, third grade. They want us to do that. And we, gosh, I think it's maybe we only need about 250 dictionaries for our several in elementary schools. And it's really not expensive to buy them. And of course, we'll put the stickers in there and, you know, go and present them. So that's a simple, low cost thing that I think pretty much any club could do. And it turns out schools do want paper dictionaries. <laughs> so I was very happy to hear that. And that was one of the surprises that I had too. So I, I wanted to see if they were getting the bang, getting our bang for the buck on that. And I would tell you, the teachers really um, were enthused about the, the students getting dictionaries. Right, right. I, I thought maybe that they were, you know, that they didn't use them anymore. But they, I think there, there are, you know, there are skills <laughs> that are learned by using a paper dictionary. So that's another idea for you folks. Anything else for the good of the cause? Any more questions? Or I'll let you go early for dinner. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, presenters. You all did a wonderful job. I appreciate you. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Faith.